Can I have your attention, please? Thank you very much uh, for coming. Nice to see all of you. Uh, this is an important moment, I think, for SciArc, and a rare one. And in the end, I think it, it will all work or not work depending on what we do with it. And I was thinking of, a few years ago, we made a, made a book with, with Rizzoli. And there was an essay in the introduction. And in an effort to be a little bit mischievous, um, we had an essay there. And the title of the essay was, my title of the essay was, Which Lie Do You Want to Tell? Which Lie Do You Want to Tell? So the head guy at Rizzoli came and he said, Moss, look, a guy by the name of David Morton, you're going to get into even more mischief, although that wasn't the term he used. Why don't we turn it around and we'll say, which truth do you want to tell? So this is a little bit the question in this context, because what we want to talk about is the building, the Cyarc building. But before we, and there are many truths that have to do, that inform that story. But the first thing is that, that in, in thinking about this a little bit and trying to find a way to describe it, Cyarch, you could argue, Cyarch is an idea. It's really about an idea, and the idea is fragile, and it may come and it may go. I think from my point of view, and I think all of you probably have definitions for yourselves, but it has something to do with the tension between possible alternatives, tension between ideas. It's not about a belief system. It's not about allegiances. It's not about inculcating, inculcating ideologies in students. We have no interest in you parroting what I say or what anybody else says. We want you to tell us what we should have done. So this is really the spirit of the school. If the school doesn't have that, even if it has a building, it's not what it's supposed to be about. So I have to say, paradoxically, the idea is primary. There are, there are probably people who argued, or who once argued, that Cyarch had a certain life or a certain mission, even the idea that I just tried to explain, and that when that disappears, when it ends, it's finished. Something else comes along to replace it, meaning there's an institution that grows to implement a certain point of view. It could be something like the Paris Commune. And it comes up, and it has a certain amount of energy, and a certain amount of focus, and a certain amount of prim uh, primacy, and then it dissipates, and it disappears, and it goes away. So there's also an argument for that. In other words, whether there are multiple lives, and multiple energies, and multiple vantage points, I think is, is a question that SciArc will face forever, and how it answers that question will determine largely the content of the school. There's really no Cyarch without Ray Cappy. There's really no Cyarch without Mike Rotundi. There's really no Cyarch without Neil Denari. And those people contributed in very substantial ways. But when Chris and Ming and I came to the scene eight years ago, it was a very different context, very different problems, very different world, very different issues. And I think it's important from our perspective to understand what we did and what we had to do in order to make what seems to have happened in the last day or so, possible and plausible. How did we do it? And I think at, at that time, 
uh, seven, eight years ago, we had issues, as some of you know, of accreditation, we had issues of financing, we had issues of thesis, what is it, should we do it? And what we did, and I think this is important, is to build the school back, to reimagine the school, not that we did it alone, but with, with the help of, a, of an unusual faculty which continued to build, and make the school in a different way, with a different capacity, with different tools, and with a different institutional mindset. And I think what we somehow figured out was that we have in, a, in, a, in an institutional way a schizophrenia here that we decided not to fight everything and we decided not to fight everyone and we decided to acquiesce and to solve certain problems that had to do with finances, it had to do with the institutional structure of the school, uh, that had to do with NAB and WASC and all of those things and to solve those in a neat, discreet, simple, clear way. Because we finally understood, and not that we understood this all initially, finally understood that if we didn't do that, the durability of the school was in question. So I think we understood what we had to do and, 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 and step by step, uh, we managed, I think, over a period of years to do it. There are people who talk to me, uh, including people who have been at the school quite a long time, and who have said, it's good you were able, although we didn't necessarily anticipate this, it's good you were able to take care of the business or administrative or commercial real estate aspects of SciArc so the school could continue working on its pedagogy. And I think what, what is important, I, th I think this is a wonderful lesson for you and for all of us. What we did, what we did in getting the building, assuming the escrow completes in May, what we did is a primary manifestation of the, of the SciArc pedagogy, of the SciArc belief system. I'm terribly naive. I'm an innocent, like all of you, and we think things are doable and plausible and makeable and buildable and possible that lots of people think can't be done. Can't be done. No money, never happen. Forget about it. SciArc has been a vagabond school for 40 years, actually, 40 years, and to some extent, to be honest, I think we, we played that up. We emphasized that. While this is the establishment and that's the establishment and over there is the more establishment, we're the Bedouins, we're the vagabonds. We keep it moving, we're light, we're quick. And we were. And I think ultimately that's how we survived. And I, I would have to say that the capacity of SciArc to move in that way, quickly, dexterously. We remade the institutional structure of the school. We remade the schedule of the school. The schedule, I mean, over a calendar year, it's utterly different now. In fact, I, re I remember uh, Jamie and Ming were, and I were just talking about this, that when Ming and I were going around talking to all the graduate students about shifting the thesis from, from uh, January to, uh, to September, I was told, I was confronted by a group of students and the student said, Moss, you're doing this for money. You're doing this for money. And I said, money is a factor. And the proof of that is here today. But what we were able to do, I think, is, is, is to correlate, to connect, to associate the content of the school, the aspirations of the school, the needs of the students, because that's why we're here, for the students and for the faculty, to tie those two things together so somebody could actually use the word 
cash, dinero, capital, whatever it is, and wouldn't be ipso facto and immediately vilified. And we did it. We actually changed the schedule and we changed the program. But I think what I'm saying is that the capacity for a tiny school, for a tiny school, which in the end, as I said, is not about a building, it's about an ideal. And for a school like that, which was, and there's certainly uh, corrob clear corroboration of this, at a certain point was asymptotic to clear incapacity, incapacity maybe eight years ago. As Ian Robertson said, there's no more PSYARC. And we said, great, great, we make another one. So I think in terms when, when you sit in a studio and when somebody tells you risk, speculation, courage, an introverted way to see the world, our way to see the world, not just what everybody sees and not just how everyone evaluates, and you can do that, and we can do that, and I think we did it, we did it, we will do it, we'll do it again, as I said at the beginning, all this now t depends on what we do with it. Because as, as I think I suggested originally, it's the idea, in a sense, what's in the building, not the building, but also nice to have a building. Um, I wanted to um, just briefly acknowledge, and I'm, I'm going to get into difficulty here because I want to thank very important people who made all of this work for you and for the future of the school, which will be in other people's hands, uh, who were essential to this process, and some of them remain so, and some of them have moved on. As I said, there is no school without the initiators, Cappy and his group, Michael and his group, and Neil Denari. But in terms of dealing with the particular problems, our set of problems, our set of issues, our set of concerns, Ian Robertson, I think, who was originally board chair when we started in a very different kind of institutional structure, one that has gone by the wayside, for good and for bad. And Ian worked with Chris Ginnick and Ming and I laying out a course which ultimately landed us where we landed today. So he was, he was very important, he was essential. And then Ming uh, Fung, who, to be honest, rebuilt the graduate program. Chris Ginnick, I don't know if Chris is here, but Chris, who rebuilt the undergraduate program, and then other people who came along and, and contributed in extremely significant ways. And while we're doing this, and while, while the energy and content and mission of SciArc is, is being reconstituted, money is also showing up, sorry to say. And that, in a sense, allowed us to do what we wanted to do. So then came Hernan Diaz Alonso, very critical role. I mean, if you roll back the clock five, six years, the thesis program was, was in tatters, and he rebuilt that. Uh, Alexis Rochas took over the Making and Meaning program. He had three people, it was nothing, and rebuilt it now. The 85 people show up for that program. We're making another program now called DID for for, for younger students. And then at a certain point, uh, we were in a position, as some of you know, to begin to, and this is not to institutionalize, but to begin to hire very particular people that could complement the order or reorganize the order of the school and help us in places where we were weak. So this is also important because you have to acknowledge where you know what you know. And similarly, you have to be able to see where it doesn't work. So Jamie Bennett uh, showed up fortuitously, I don't know, two years ago? Something, something like uh, two years ago. Bill Kramer subsequently. But Jamie Bennett was with a very different history, very different pedigree, and many of you know him, and if you don't, you should 
stop by and have a cigarette or a drink, whatever they do down there. Uh, and he was essential, an essential voice and an essential perspective in evaluating what we were and what we had to do. Because we all know SciArc is only about ethereal design content and can't do business, can't operate in a city, can't operate in a commercial world, can't do it. And to be honest, the history of the school suggested that, that to some extent that was true. And I have to say, one other thing, when, when we worked, as we worked over a number of years on this process, I was told by very sophisticated, intelligent, experienced business types who run banks and big commercial real estate firms, for instance, Moss, you can't talk to the people on the other side of the table. We have to talk to the people on the other side of the table. Because you don't know how to do that, but we know how to do that. I think it, 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 it turns out, and again, I would say that if there's an issue of confidence or self-confidence, as you argue for the work that you do or the content of the work that you do, I decided, and I talked to Jamie about this, when, when the situation seemed to be ready to be resolved and we weren't resolving it through the conventional institutional mechanisms that had been provided, that I would talk to, and some of you know the names, Murillo Maddox, that I would talk to John Maddox, who Ian Robertson uh, fortuitously had introduced to me five, six years ago. He thought it was important that I know John Maddox, who is, the, um, who is a partner in the firm Maddox Murillo. And it's funny, and I think maybe this is also anecdotal, but maybe useful to, to, to some of you, as issues are resolved, or deals get done, or problems are solved. Because the only thing I ever could talk to John Maddox about was football, and, and which, I, which I now started to follow a little bit late, but better never than late, or late than never, whatever it is. And John Maddox, as we did business the first time around, because Maddox and Murillo are the owners of this building up to the last day or two. And he had a couple of sons who played at a school called Oaks Christian, which is a famous school. And I have a little boy who also worked with a coach at that school. And somehow in this discussion of the little kid and his kids and football over probably four or five lunches, Oddly enough, never ever talking about the school, never talking about the project, just talking about something we could share. And maybe this is also a lesson somewhere that in a personal way, to make projects or to arrive at conclusions, this was actually a mechanism for us to talk, have a beer, understand each other, see where there was room for an exchange a real exchange. And ultimately, I think we came to the point where we could talk where others weren't able to make that jump. And then not long thereafter, Jamie Bennett got into the situation, got into the discussion, and has nursed this thing along for probably two years with its ebbs and flows and cosine curve behavior staying with it, keeping the communication open, every once in a while a little bit football. Maddox comes over to my office and watches Miller throw the ball in the front of the office. Things like that, I mean, it's an odd story. It's an, it's an odd story in a way, and yet it's my sense without that piece of the story, the rest of it, uh, the rest of it never happens. So, the announcement today is that SciArc is in escrow on this building. The escrow will close end of April, beginning of May. And all of you and all of us collectively and together will hold hands 
a kiss goodnight, and march off into the sunset, and let's see where we go. Thank you very much.